I'm a marketer, all right? I'm not a, I'm not a CEO. So as I get into building a team, now I'm a CEO. Now I'm running and I'm managing people. I'm dealing with HR. I'm dealing with payroll. I'm dealing with compliance issues and legalities. And I have zero interest in any of that, bro. I'm a marketer. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. I read that heartfelt note from the woman who came down to see you at your, at your event last week, who didn't even have a cell phone and, and you turned her into a millionaire and she, she kind of spills it all out there. So you got to go follow Ricky. That was on his um, Instagram, really inspiring, but you know, you're a guy who's been selling a hundred units a year for years and years by yourself as a solo agent, making a netting a million dollars as a real estate agent mm -hmm. and number one Remax agent when you were at Remax in all of Alabama and the yep. cool thing is you see, to me, you kind of see th the forest through the trees so clearly. As you just described, I mean, you're in all these different spaces and you're excelling at all these different spaces. But that's, tw that's Ricky 2023. Now, take us back to, like, I know you're a college football player, which I think is cool. I don't, you don't share that too much, but I picked it up in one of your, your, um, pieces of content. I'm like, damn, this guy walked on to Alabama. So give us a little bit of the football career. Um, cause I think that that story needs to be told. When I was in high school, I was a freshman. I played every sport up to that point, basketball, baseball, soccer, uh, everything I could really get into. Um, never played football, um, until I was in high school. So when I was a freshman, I stepped on a scale and I think I was, what was I like 150 or something like that? I can't remember how much I weigh, but I was I was way bigger than um, you know the other freshmen, you know my buddies and stuff. I was like, huh, you know, like maybe I can play football. So so I tried out and um, you know decided that's what I was going to do, and it went well. Um, so freshman, you know, sophomore, junior, senior. So I played four years in in high school. When I was a junior, I was a starter on varsity. Um, I was playing outside linebacker and then I moved to defensive end, um, as a senior, um, and then back to outside linebacker in college. And, um, so I had a full paid scholarship to Marshall, Missouri, which is an NAIA school. And that was cool because that my college was taken, it was paid for. The only problem was it was like a 20 hour drive and I was 18 um, and I didn't even know if I wanted to go to college. So I went there for a year. Um, I came back. Uh, I did a, I did a semester at, uh, Faulkner state, which is called coastal now here in my local area. Mm -hmm. Then I went to, um, I went to Alabama where I was going to walk on. So I was an invited walk on, um, to Alabama but by the time spring tra spring training came, my body was just completely shot. Um, you know, I was like running like six miles a day uphill, like like lifting twice a day. Like my body was totally toast. And I was like, okay, this isn't going to work. Um, I was aching and everything else. So I was like, okay, what, what am I going to do now? Because I'm not going to do college. All right. And then I ended up failing a history class at Alabama that one semester I went, I was like, I'm definitely done with this. What do I do? Real estate's one class, you know, get my license, uh, you know, same opportunities as people that go to college for 10 years to be a doctor or lawyer. I was like, I'm going to do that. Um, so that, that's really how it all played out, man. Um, and, uh, I just, I really loved football, but my body just wasn't at a professional level to be able to withstand the, uh, you know, the, the 20 years of working out, <laughs> you know, so, well, you but then I ended discipline. up pursuing other things. Right. So I got into, um, I got into martial arts. So I got into, uh, Japanese jujitsu was the first one that was in like 2004 ish, three or four. I got into that and I pursued that. I got my black belt there. That was like 10 years worth of, you know, training there. Um, and then I also, um, did, you know, so I traveled and did jujitsu matches all over the country and ended up doing two MMA matches. Um, and then I got my purple belt with, uh, in the 10th planet, um, jujitsu. Oh, really? And, um, I did that for like, I did martial arts for well over a decade. And, um, that was just a piece of my life. And then that was just another thing. It was like, I'm going to go be a world champion. 
And so when I was 32, 10 years ago or so, uh, the last match that I did, you know, I went all through the tournament, made it to the finals. The guy at the finals was a diesel and, um, he rode me like a, you know, he just rode me the whole time. Cause he knew that if he, he knew that if I could get his leg, it was over. Um, you know, he, but that was his game plan. Just keep me down and don't let me get his leg. And then he eventually got me, he got my arm, um, right before we went to overtime, but my neck felt like I'd been in a car wreck, like whiplash for like three or four days. And I was like, okay, this, I'm not going to be a world champion here. Um, what else can I do? Right. And that was right when I was like, let me go teach agents how to crush it. So like every, like I always had to have something occupying myself that I could go be the best at in the world. Um, you know, anything that I was doing outside of my day to day job was a side hustle to become number one in the world at it. So like I was going to school side hustle was football to be the best in the world. When that didn't work out, I was doing real estate. Let me do martial arts to go be the best in the world at it. When that, when I finally ended that chapter in my life, then I went to do real estate, right? And then my side hustle was uh, to be a real estate coach to go be the best in the world at it. It's like I always had something occupying my off time um, that I was pursuing to become the absolute best in the world at whatever that that side gig was right so that's interesting to to talk through that because i never really thought about it like that but that's literally what my life has been a a series of day jobs with side gigs to be number one in the world and it's cool because the side gigs i mean the last side gig right becoming a real estate coach actually turned into my main gig and so now that's my day-to-day you know and now my side gig is becoming number one business influencer, right? You know, in the world. So it's cool. Yeah, we're going to unpack some of that stuff because you have like a David Goggins type of discipline and the people who achieve at your level typically do, but your career arc is, is incredible. So I'd like to break down, you know, the agent side, your journey through being a top agent which most people would stop there when you're, when you're making a million dollars a year and you're crushing it and you're number one, that satisfies most people. So that, that's one story I want to get into. Then the coaching thing, you did it like no one else has ever done it. And I want you to get into, you will go down that path and you got some really cool insight from legends like Gary V. And um, you started doing all your coaching for free and that's blowing up now. So I want to get into that. I also want to talk a little bit about your investing side, your um, your personal branding. Cause I don't think anyone does social media as well as you as an agent, uh, in all of those buckets, agency, coaching, investing, branding events, and you do it all yourself and it's, and you're giving it away for free, which is you've just kind of flipped the industry on its head in those areas. But let's start with being an agent just so if people don't know you and I, you got to go follow Ricky Carruth, easy to find on social and his content's just helpful. We have five agents on our team here in Baltimore of, of out of 30 that are just they're Ricky Caruthites. They do it the way he does it. Talk to buyers and sellers, weekly email. The stuff works. Mm. Um, so, but agent-wise, you, you start selling real estate. Were you immediately just crazy successful or, or did you have to ride it up and down? That's a 21-year journey, but highlights of the agent career. How'd that work? It took me eight months to make my first sale. Didn't even know if I wanted to do real estate. Once I committed, I was all in. It took me eight months. I was roofing houses and doing real estate on the side. Then I uh, made a couple sales, had a couple pending, had a couple listings, went full time. So I made a, from there for about two years, I made a million dollars. Mm. And then uh, because the market exploded, it wasn't because I was some kind of special, like gifted person. It was because the market just exploded and I was a hard worker. So I took advantage and uh, took that money and started flipping houses, borrowed a lot of money to do that. As I grew that business, when the market flipped, I lost everything because of, you know, all the debt that I owed and the houses weren't worth anything. They dropped in value so quickly. It just, it was just a down spiral. So I ended up losing everything, went bankrupt, was sleeping on friends' couches, sleeping in my car. I was eating out of people's refrigerators. Um, You know, I was just completely broke. Uh, had nothing at all, lost every little thing that I had. 
So I went back to roofing, and then I got a job on an oil rig. Um, did that for like two to three years. In 2008, I was laid off from the oil rig, got back into real estate. I just took everything that I learned from losing everything, um, which was don't get into bad debt. If you're going to take debt, make sure it's good long-term debt. You have a long-term plan with that debt. And, you know, if you want to build a large real estate business that never gets affected by the market, build it on people, not deals. And build a huge database of people that never forget who you are and will always, you know, you know, love you because you love them back. And they, you know, they'll always do business with you and refer people to you. It's real simple. So, but I didn't do that in the beginning. I just did a deal and threw them away. Did a deal, threw them away. They threw me away too. They didn't want to buy back in this overinflated market. And I could just go call 10 more people and make 30 grand today. So I didn't need anybody. But at the end of the day, I didn't know I did need people. I, I needed to build a database for when the market crashed. But I didn't know that in the beginning. So that's something I wish I would have known. But, but I'm glad I didn't because it made me learn and go through the, what I went through. And so then from 2008 to 14, I decided I was going to be the number one agent. So uh, by 2014, I was the number one Remax agent in Alabama. So it took me six years after I actually learned everything and went through that to actually execute to the level that I'm number one. And then uh, that was the first year I did 100 deals in 14, and I did 100 deals through 14 to 21. Um, so eight years in a row. I was the number one agent in my entire MLS those eight years. I was the number one REMAX agent three of those years, top five every every one of those years. Um, and then in, in 2022, about a year ago, I kind of stepped halfway out of production. Dad handles the day-to-day -day listings and sales. Um, I still handle marketing and consulting and stuff like that lead gen stuff of that nature and um so i've got kind of like not even a whole foot i'm like i've got one like i've got like two fingers in in the day-to-day -day sales stuff with dad and um but i'm more so focused on building my brand and building these other businesses yeah you know like for the past 12 months have really been like a transition period for me because i took 20 years of doing sales and then stepped out of sales and so it's just, it's really taken me a minute to kind of get used to that. You know, for the past, I took like three months or so where I was just full-time creating content and with no real businesses per se behind the content where it's like, okay, I'm getting an ROI on my time. I'm just creating basically. And like my income's going down because all my income was tied to the market and the market went down. Um, so it's like, man, I spent all this time doing this, but I'm making less money. You know, this is, you know, it's not, it's not easy mentally to go through something like that, but that's literally what I've went through over the past six to eight months is less, less income and, uh, working my ass off, you know, creating and trying to build these businesses. But it's just been a transition period, you know, to really get my footing of what my new life looks like without going to listing appointments and showing properties to, you know, creating content, finding the balance between creating content, um, you know, and finding opportunities to build businesses, right, that could really, you know, take everything to the next level. So, you know, that's what the last 12 months have been for me, a transition period. And I'm, I'm in a pretty good spot right now because I'm, I'm, I'm finally getting real clarity on things that I can do to build businesses and see that great ROI on all the work that I'm putting in. And, you know, the longer I wait to implement those monetary strategies, the bigger those monetary strategies will be because, I mean, I'm picking up two, 300 new followers a day, um, you know, as we speak. So the more patient I am, the better on the back end. So, you know, lots to unpack there, but. Well, the reason to me, because I've been following you since 2017 and you've came and talked to our team, you know, a couple times and you're just, A, you're disarmingly honest. It's just always straight facts. Ricky's got nothing to sell you. He's given everything away for free. And the reason you're such a powerful coach, in my opinion, is because you've lived it at the most granular level. You've succeeded, you've failed. You know what works well, you know what kind of works and it's tough if you have this skill set and you also know what flat out doesn't work. You've had the highs and the lows. So that's the type of person I want to learn from because I'd like to learn from your mistakes. I'm 35, you're 40, whatever, one, two. 
Um, and I know there's so much you can teach and you give it away for free. So we, we talked about your agency career, which is a hall of fame career. You got every award Remax has ever given out and you would have got that at any brand. Um, and now you've been at EXP for a few years and you're, you're the only top producer at EXP that I know who never talks about EXP. So we might want to get into that because your brand is so much bigger than come work with me at EXP. Um, but let's go into that coaching piece because you've done what I, I'm pretty sure no one else has ever done, which is create a pretty massive audience based on giving away everything you've ever done, all your best stuff, all the time for free. Where, where, where the hell did that come from? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it was just common sense to me. Um, you know, I looked at what the influencers are doing out there and, um, you know, I just looked at what I was trying to do in the real estate coaching space. And I was like, man, like the dollars are, are in the eyeballs, you know, not necessarily customers, right? Because the eyeballs turn into customers. The more eyeballs you have, the more customers you have, you know, here it's like agents, right? I think agents play on the surface. When somebody says they want to sell a property, they're like, okay, well, when can I come see it? And the first question should be, well, why are you trying to sell? And um, they're just playing on the surface. They're not, they're trying to convert before they connect. And I think the same thing with real estate coaching. I feel like coaching is just like buy this program, buy this program, buy this program. Instead of here, let me show you how to do some stuff. Let me build some trust with you. And then let me see if I have a product that could bring you more value that you could pay for. And, um, it's just common sense to me. Like, okay, how can I get the most eyeballs? Well, if the number one Remax agent in Alabama that figured out how to close a hundred deals a year single handedly for eight years in a row will tell everyone how they do how they did everything for free, then that will attract a lot of eyeballs. So I said, Let me just do that for free, attract a lot of eyeballs, and then I'll just figure everything else out later. You know? When did you start? So that's doing really all that? it was. It's really as simple as that. When did you start? I think you mentioned like 2014. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to get into this coaching space. 2016 was, so, so I tried to write a book because I was writing a book like, uh, like oh nine, 10, 11. I just kind of started and stopped a couple of times. And then I put it down for a couple of years, 2016. I got serious about it. Then I went and spoke and, um, uh, I went and spoke at, uh, uh, in Biloxi at a Remax event. That was the first time I spoke at the end of 16. And, um, the the response from the crowd was overwhelming afterwards you know i was like wow what i have people really really want really need so let me finish this book so i finished the book and then i wrote another one really quickly and um so it was 16 really 17 i guess was kind of the kickoff where i was publishing stuff and i was i mean at the end of 16 i was putting out some started putting out some content so really maybe end of 16 and then in 17, I started coaching and I was charging I had a program. I was charging whatever, 20 bucks a month, a hundred a month, thousand one time. You know, I did a bunch of different models to try to figure out the best way to build a business on the back of it. And none of it really worked. I could have kept going down that road and figured out something that they did, of course. But I'm the kind of person, man, whenever I do something, I want it to be something that just everybody just loves. I don't want it to be something where when people see me calling, they see my number on the caller ID, they're like, oh, God, here's here's this guy calling to sell me this thing. Uh, I want them to think, oh, yes, you know, wow, Ricky's calling. You know, let's see what he's got going on. Um, that's the kind of effect I want. You know, that's why, like you mentioned EXP, that's why I don't talk about it. Because right now I could call any of my followers and they'd be like, oh, my God, Ricky's calling. And they would answer versus if I was um, screaming EXP and they saw me calling and they'd be like, Oh God, here, you know, Ricky, he's probably going to try to, you know, recruit me. Um, that's not the effect I want to have on the world is, Oh God, here, this guy is calling me. Well, I want, you know, the opposite. So, um, same thing with my real estate business. I never did call to try to sell your house. You know, I called to see how you're doing, see if there's something you do need, see if you're thinking about doing something, if I can help you do it. And if not, I'd love to stay in touch with you. Uh, never tried to just sell a house. I mean, in the beginning I did until I learned the lessons, you know, right. of how this business actually works. But, um, 
yeah, I started out charging and then I had, and then it, it hit me all of a sudden, like, why don't you just open this up for free, man, and quit banging your head against the wall. And once I did that, everything just, it, it, was, it was slow, of course, but like everything changed, like, you know, followers started coming in, people started sending me messages about how it's helping and it just continued to snowball, you know, and like how it's all played out is exactly the way that I planned it, you know, for it to snowball into what it is now. And I'm even looking further down the road now. I know, I know how it's, my plan is not complete. Like it's, I know where it's going. Well, do you kind of coin the term relationships over transactions? And I also like what you just said, which is, you know, connect before you convert. And if everyone could just take a breath and take a page out of Ricky's book, you'd be a lot better off. Um, you've co been coaching me indirectly. You don't even know it. Cause I've been watching your stuff. Gosh, seven years. And that's why I'm asking you. And every time I've ever asked Ricky to help with something, he goes, yeah, sure. You want to be on this podcast? No problem. You want to come talk to my team? Yeah, I'm in. Never once mentions EXP recruiting, buy my stuff, give, 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 give. I'm waiting to get the right hook. Ricky just jabs, jabs people's face off, and then eventually he'll have a right hook ask, which is a Gary V, one of his books, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Speaking of Gary V, I've seen you with him before, and I guess you went out to meet him. Talk to talk us a little bit about how you got in front of him and what you learned and, and kind of how that relationship is today. So um, I, was, uh, I was already doing all the stuff, and then a guy in my office showed me his Monday morning rant video. That was the first video I saw of his, and I was like, man, this guy is, like, speaking my language. And um, I followed him from there, and it was just it was wild. I mean, it was just like, um, you know, God-given, you know, from heaven type deal because it was exactly what I was going through, like how to build this coaching business, you know, and basically he's preaching posts on every platform, just give – give to people, um, you know, without expectations. It was exactly everything that I was already, you know, doing. He had a big influence in me going for free. Um, and then I had the opportunity to go to four D's, which is like 10 people, you know, at his office at a conference in a conference uh, room, um, and learning from him and his team for a, for a day. So it was cool. Cause I got to go there and tell him face to face, Hey, you're a big reason why I'm, you know, crushing it and going to continue to crush it and help a lot of people. That was the whole reason I went to that was to just look at him in his face and say, you know, you helped me so much as far as laying out the blueprint of how I can really go out there and help a lot of people. Um, because that's who I was. I want to help a lot of people. Um, you know, but also build businesses around helping people, you know, he really right. laid the blueprint out. So it was really cool. And then, um, now we get together once a year on a, on a zoom and I get to kind of hash out like what questions I have, you know, for like the next stages of my business, you know, and the, I always leave those conversations with complete clarity on what I should be doing, you know? Um, so it's, it's really cool, um, to be able to spend some time with him and get his insight on my specific situation. So it's a cool relationship, honestly. Um, and I'm glad to have him as a mentor, um, because obviously he has done it, you know, like he, oh, he's he the is, goat, he's yeah, the goat at content yeah. creation, personal branding, and God knows he's got his hands in a lot of businesses. So we talked yep. about your aging career. We talked a little bit about the coaching. Um, and as of late, cause I'm an avid follower of yours. You've been investing at a different clip because everything Ricky does kind of like you know, side hustle will be the best in the world at it. seems like something on, on your radar is trying to gobble up a hundred million dollars of real estate this year as an investor, which most agents could, yeah. could learn a thing or two about investing properly. Um, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about your investing side. Yeah. So I lost all, I lost everything flipping houses, you know, borrowing money. So now every flip I do, I pay cash and then I flip it. You know, I, I buy cash, I fix, I flip. Um, the downfall is, is I have cash tied up. I, honestly, I wouldn't even do it if I didn't have great partners that want to do it. Um, I just love the relationship. So we do make money. Um, but you know, it's, it's nothing crazy. I'd rather hold the properties, honestly, but, um, it's what they love to do. And so, you know, I know that relationship will turn into bigger things down the road. So I just continue, continue that relationship, but I, we pay cash and then we fix and then we flip. Um, so, you know, the safety net is if something happens, we can take a refi cash out and get some cash out if we need to rent it, 
We can do a lot of, we have a lot of options if the market turns on us. Um, so when I got back in, I had the bankruptcy and stuff. So I had to wait a couple of years to, to where I could start buying. But um, I started buying properties. I bought, you know, and now today, like back in 2010 or 11, I think, maybe even 12, was, I think 10, 10 or 11, I bought my first uh, property coming back. Lived in it for a year, then rented it out. I still own it today. Um, so I've got condos, I've got duplexes, fourplexes, commercial buildings um all over of the county um and so you know and i'm continuing to build that personal portfolio um, of just these local properties so that's fun and then here recently over the past maybe two years i've really taken my time to really understand the uh the multifamily sector and the, the, the bigger commercial sector um and uh, try to understand how these big deals work and operate with these big institutional buyers and syndicators and funds um, and really research it from the front to back, you know. And so that that's what I'm getting into, syndications, funds, raising money um, for these deals. Something I didn't want to do unless I understood it to the fullest because if I'm going to take somebody's money, then I want some serious uh, – you know, some, I want to be able to sleep at night knowing that, you know, I'm making these people money, that this is a very low risk situation, um, and that everybody's protected on the back end. So yeah, man, like we, I've looked at like 50, 60 deals. We, we have one that we're, you know, working on right now to get it tied up for 20 mil in Orlando. And, you know, we're going to raise money to buy it. Um, I'm also looking at like triple net lease, uh, commercial properties here locally. Um, I've got one that's in the 1.5 range. I think me and my buddy might just go in on ourselves and just buy it. Um, so yeah, I'm going hard on, on that game because it real estate's a investing is a sector that you just get really rich, really slowly. Yeah. You know, the earlier you start, the better. So I'm just putting a lot of resources into buying as much properties as I can uh, myself personally, uh, with one partner, two partners, and with a bunch of people, you know, that throw in and buy these big deals. So again, it's been two years in the making. I've just been slowly learning and researching and understanding so that I can be in the best position possible, you know, cause we may see some really good deals on some multifamilies, you know, with, with the cost of debt doubling in the last year on the commercial side. So we'll see. Well, I love that real estate investing. I'm an avid investor as well. We call that it's not get rich quick. It's get rich for sure. Cause yeah. if you do it right, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be in a good spot. And um, mm -hmm. I also like what you said. It's an old Jim Rohn line, which is the fortune looms large for those who start early. So if you're seeing this and you're thinking about investing in real estate or you're in real estate, it's a time, it's a young man's game because time will do all the heavy, heavy lifting for you. So God, you know, tell you what, Ricky, if you were a stock, God, I'd love to buy some Ricky Carruth because you don't do things until you've mastered them. Kind of like you did with the agency thing. Hey, you had to fail. You had to mess it up. But now because you're older and wiser, you're learning from other people's mistakes. So I don't see you making any bonehead moves in the big real estate investing side. And I know one of your goals is, and I just know this from something you'd posted that you want to acquire a hundred million this year. And I think you're, I guess maybe looking at 36 million or so or close already. The $16 million deal we talked about last time I was here, it fell apart. So that's nothing that we ended up pursuing. We're still working on the $20 million deal. Um, and then I'm buying this one and a half one on my own with another guy. So, you know, like we're, I'm sticking and moving. I'm looking for the very best opportunities, but you're right. Like, um, there's a lot of coaches that have been agents for three years, sold 19 properties and sell courses for $500. I, 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 uh, I got in the business, you know, I made a meal, I lost it. I came back six years to the top at the top for three years before even starting to try to write a book or, you know, coach people or whatever. So you're right. I kind of wait till I re and the reason why my content has went, went stale for a while is because I was just kind of saying the same thing over and over again in terms of helping real estate agents. And I never did really get into the investing side of content or how to grow on social media and stuff like that. 
because I didn't feel like I had, I didn't have the audacity to go speak on that kind of stuff yet until I felt like I actually knew what I was talking about. Now I feel like I have a big real estate portfolio. I understand, you know, the, um, the different sides of real estate investing. I feel like I can go teach a lot of people a lot of different things that I've learned. And on the social media side, I can teach a lot of people how to grow on social media, how to build your business on social media. And so these are things that I now feel like I can speak on, not to the highest, highest levels, but a level enough that I feel comfortable sharing, you know? Um, well, you, um, well, you so are the right. highest level on personal branding. You're at the highest level, in my opinion, especially in the real estate space. Is a practicing yeah. agent. So that's one that, I mean, you got to get, you're, you're one of the goats, in my opinion, on that. We can dive into that. Agency, you've achieved it all. Investing, you're going to climb that mountain. Now, what I want to know is you're, you're still, you have a team. I know your dad's doing some of the work. You're involved in the business. It's very profitable. These investing um, avenues require a lot of due diligence and in study and, and work. Mm -hmm personal branding and the amount of content you put out is ungodly. Um, I'm seeing 30 posts a week. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not doing this right. Um, and I'm trying, you know, I'm putting it, but not, not enough. What are your days? Like, how do you structure this? Is it like, Hey, I've, you know, every Monday I do this Tuesday, I do that. Is it, I just know I have to do these key things. How do you manage that? Yeah, it's like I say, there was a while where I was um, just doing content, you know, all day, every day. Uh, I, I wasn't focused on any other real businesses or anything. I was just doing content, just creating, brainstorming, trying to uh, trying to really get all that, like trying to systemize that whole piece. Um, but now I'm a little more organized. Um, Mondays, I kind of put aside more for like organizational growth. Tuesdays are more for um, content creation, where I actually try to spend the whole day creating. Uh, Wednesdays are more for, I try to focus more on real estate deals, like the big commercial deals, or maybe local listings and sales. I do my weekly email on that day, all that. Um, so I try, to assist, I try to segregate it like that, you know, where Monday I'm growing, Tuesday I'm filming, Wednesday I'm checking on all the real estate deals and following up then Thursday and Friday are more so like kind of whatever like projects I may make some more content you know so I kind of leave those two days open to kind of finish the week however I need to finish the week that's kind of what's working for me right now but this is something that's always changing right right always changing like this week Wednesday I'm going to Cali for the rest of the week so there goes the rest of the week so I got to try to squeeze everything into today and tomorrow to, um, you know, to make sure I get everything done that I, I need to get done. Um, so it, like my dad said a long time ago, you know, all you can do is all you can do. And I added to that, which is be happy with whatever you do get done. You know, we all want to, you know, get all these checklist things done, you know, today when in reality, it's just not going to happen. You know, and then we become disappointed that we didn't get all this stuff done because we want to be a superstar tomorrow when in reality we like really crushed it, even though we only got 20 percent of our of the things we wanted to get accomplished, accomplished, you know. So people need to really kind of chill out on themselves, you know, with with this kind of stuff, because it can get super dangerous. We we really overestimate what we can do short term and underestimate what we could do long term because of that compounding effect, you know, that slight edge that, um, you know, it's like, it's like this, this is a good example. If, if you, um, if you spent 30 hours, 30 minutes a week, just take 30 minutes to, you know, input information into your CRM that you'll never use, right? People like, you know, your clients, dogs, birthdays, and, uh, you know, stuff that you'll just never use, right? right? 30 minutes a week. And you may think, oh, 30 minutes a week. Well, that's 26 hours for the year. You know what you can get done in 26 working hours? You know, it's crazy the amount of multiplication in your business you can create in 26 hours. And we kind of disregard it because it's just, oh, it's just 30 minutes a week. 
It's like, wait a minute, you know, this compounds to, to be massive over just a year, not to mention two, three, four, five years, what that actually looks like. It's like every little second counts so much. And um, so, you know, that little 30 minutes a week, it's like we underestimate how much of an impact that is in the short term, right? We, we, over, we overestimate, right? But then we underestimate what that, what that 30 minutes looks like over the next couple of years, you know, and that's just 30 minutes a week, you know, imagine like an hour a week or two hours a week that you put on something that could be spent in a much more effective way, but you kind of disregard it like it's just two hours. So I'll just do this. No, that, and like thinking like this is how you really become more efficient and really blow your business up over the next two to three years is putting something in place that you can visualize compounding into these massive, you know, these, these, these massive legs of your business over time. Well, you obviously value your time and use it judiciously. So I appreciate you spending some time with me today. This has been awesome. All you can do is all you can do and be happy. That's it. And be happy with it because there's a gratitude piece there. Now, because I think you're, you're the, maybe one of the fastest growing and if not the best personal brand as a solo agent, it's not like you have 20 film members flying you around and filming all this stuff. You're just documenting, grinding, doing it the way that we could do it as agents. Ricky's not doing anything too crazy. Most of it's on his iPhone, does a little editing, he's posting. What do you, where do you capture these ideas? Because like, like I'm sure you get these flashes of inspiration. Ooh, that'd be a good piece of content. Ooh, I should say that. Because like, you put out so much. I know, what's your system on these Instagram reels that you just keep rocking the shit out of? And they're all good. It's not like, what the hell is he talking about? That was dumb. It's like, no, this value, value, value. Yeah, so... what? Like I'll have little ideas hit me based on articles I'm reading or talking to people. I may think of something while I'm talking to you right now and I may jot it down. And so I'll email it to myself with the subject of reels and a place where I get a lot of it is just um, DMS people that DM me I, uh, questions and stuff. I'm like, Oh, this would make a good, you know, um, reel. So I'll just screenshot and, and email it to myself. And then when I sit down on Tuesday or whenever I'm going to sit down and brainstorm a good 20 ideas or so, and then batch film those 20 ideas, I'll just go to my email and just search reels. And then I'll look through all the ideas that since the last time I filmed. So this is like a week's worth or, you know, two, three, four, five days worth of ideas that just kind of compound. Again, there's the compound right. compound into this, these emails, you know, and I just kind of go through them and just get them all on paper. Right. And so I've got all those. Then I sit down and think, okay, what else is going on? What's going on today? What's going on in my business? You know, what kind of, what social media tip can I share? What, um, you know, what's going on with the market? And so I try to come up with a good 20 ideas and then just film them all in one shot. So I'll come up with them. Then I have to set my camera up. Am I going to sit? Am I going to sit on a stool, low seat, standing, lighting, camera framing, boom mic, um, shirt? Am I going to wear, you know, the same shirt all 20? Am I going to switch it out every three or four videos? And then I'll sit and just batch film, you know, with a green screen, um, 20, 20 hits. And, and so you like do it I, yourself. That's crazy. Man. And you just set it up. I yourself. film it all myself. Yeah. But then I send it to editors and they edit the, uh, right. the captions and stuff in the backgrounds. It's crazy. So then I've got, so I've got the, so I've got the ones I'm looking straight at you, mm -hmm. but then I've got all the podcast clips right. that I mix in there. Then I've got my speeches that I have clips of. Then I've got the Instagram quotes, right? So then I've got the article post with the article in the background. Green so really I've got five different legs of different kinds of content there that I, I can kind of mix up throughout the day, um, you know, to where I can get those, you know, four to six pieces of content out. He just broke it down right there for free. That was worth the yeah. price of admission right there. Cause guess what I'm going to do when this is over? I'm going right. Cause I have a, I have no excuse. I have like two guys that are marketing wizards who are full-time employees. They've got cameras and I'm sitting here finding reasons I can't do it. Maybe that's you too. You can do it. Systemize it. Could it be as simple as just emailing yourself when you have an idea and coming back and batching it? Cause that's what someone who values their time does. All right. I'm going to break off an hour and a half here. I'm going to film 30 pieces of content. Bang. Yeah. That's freaking that's awesome. That's why it has to be time block. Cause until you treat it like a job, then it's really not going to work until you have a systematic way of, you know, how you're going to post, how many times you're going to post, and then creating a system around being able to produce that much content, then it's really not going to work. For real estate agents, I think you should batch out like 10 a week 
That way, if you at least got one a day, you could even do four a week, do four reels, and then the other three days do an image, you know, and like just post once a day really is the, you know, for real estate agents, I think once a day is enough to to build a large business. Once a day is simple. You know, you hear some people say 10 a day. I mean, look how much you do. But starting with one a day is a great point. Now, look, I would pay a fair price to get Ricky Cruz playbook, but he seems to want to give it all away for free. So I don't want anyone to get upset with me, but golly, I'd like you just to spend a month coming up with exactly what these agents should do and showing it to them. And maybe that's on the horizon. So here's, here's the other place I wanted to go with you. I want to know what's next and share whatever you seem to be always willing to share anything and everything, good, bad, and ugly, which is one of the things I love about you and your, your fans love about you. It's just real. I want to know what's next for Ricky Carruth selling real estate. I know your dad's involved now and he's doing some cool stuff. Then I want to know what's next. Hey, what is next for the coaching? We got zero to diamond. You're, I know you're moving and shaking with some influencers. And like you said, it's always changing, but you're on the rise. People think, oh, Ricky's at the top. I think you're just at the base of the mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. A lot of people, I'm like, oh, I'm trying to really blow up, you know? And they're like, you already are. I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm like, real estate agents know who I am, but that's it, you know? Oh, there's levels real estate agents. stuff. Yeah, real estate agents is such a small niche, you know, compared to the overall population of the internet. Um, and then so, I want to yeah, know what's like, next with investing too. So those are the three places. Agency, because you're at with, EXP and your dad, coaching, and then investing. Give us, leave us with some, what, what's to look out for with, on the Ricky Carruth rise? Because I'll call it right now, just like I'm calling the Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl and end all Pat Mahomes um, goat like Chase he's on it's the day after the Super Bowl here. I'm calling Ricky Cruz going to be at the top of the coaching industry in one way, shape, or form. And there's room for plenty at the top. That's the other thing people got to realize. You can be friends with the other people at the top. So agency first. What are you going to do with your selling? Like, why are you even selling real estate? Your dad? What's going on? EXP? I'm not not really. I just, dad loves to do it. So if he loves to do it, we still have the clientele. We have the past clients. He loves to go to listing appointments and show property and stuff. So if he loves to do it, then go do it. You know, keep doing it and you know, I'll keep helping and, you know, we'll just continue to run that business the way it's running, you know? So we could just do that until he doesn't love it. You know, is um, it just you and your dad? Do you have any other agents yeah. local? Mm-mm. No, cause you don't want him. Okay. Yeah. 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 He just, um, he can handle everything and, uh, you know, it's not that hard and we have just a great back end, you know, with a, with an assistant that just been with us 10 years, knows everything. So it makes it really simple on us, and um, he can just go out and get the deals done. It's just really easy stuff, you know, at this point. Now, I have to ask, because I know for an absolute certainty there's people all over Gulf Shores and probably all over that panhandle that would die to be on your team, that would come work for a Not really, man. It's so weird. See, that's what's so strange. The uh, Yeah, I mean, there may be a few, but it's so weird because, like, I did the workshop here in Gulf Shores in my hometown. I had two local people. That were there. Everybody that was at the workshop, there was 80 people. And everybody that was there was from Utah, Seattle, New Jersey, uh, New York, Atlanta, Carolinas, like Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas. Like it was all people that came from outside the area. Um, That's what's really strange, um, you know, that as I've come up, the local the locals are like, it's just weird. You know, I don't, I don't know what the thing is, you know, with the Ricky thing here locally, it's just kind of an odd deal. But I mean, a lot of them definitely respect me and stuff. But when it comes to this, like, you know, I don't know if they like look at like, Oh, he's with the XP. He's going to try to get me. Or if they're like, Oh, well he's going to try to charge us something at some point or, or I don't know. It's just weird. You know, like here he comes, he's trying to be a guru, but he's not really. Cause we know him as little Ricky back in the day. I don't, it's a strange deal, but, um, listen, dude, I, I am a, I am a marketer, all right? I'm not a, I'm not a CEO. So as I get into building a team, now I'm a CEO. Now right. I'm running and I'm managing people. I'm dealing with HR. I'm dealing with payroll. I'm dealing with compliance issues and legalities. And I have zero interest in any of that, bro. I'm a marketer, right? I just want to stay in my lane of being a marketer. Um, the way that I, I make, uh, my money is through mostly through affiliate marketing, right? Whereas I don't own the company. I don't deal with the back end BS. I get paid a commission for selling products. 
on the back of my brand. Um, and I, and I love that because I don't have to go out here and build a company of a hundred people and have a sales department, a marketing department, a web department, a ad department, um, you know, managers, COO, see, I don't have to do all that stuff, but I can use these other companies that already have the great product and have the team in place and deal with all the day-to-day -day operations. I can use their entire company to go out and basically do what I want to do anyway, help people and make money. Um, so that's what I've kind of come to realize is that I'm just like a great affiliate marketer because I don't want a hundred employees. I don't want a real estate team. I just want to grow my brand and continue to tell people what companies products can help them succeed the best and make a commission on those products. I think I think that's kind of like I think I finally found my calling in this whole thing, and it's um it's being an affiliate marketer, you know. So that's, that's so fast. That kind of goes back. Yeah, Ricky, I gotta tell you, you make me rethink my life sometimes, because the clarity and we've talked before, like, hey, clarity's changing. It's not like you're clear forever, but you do have clarity on this piece, and you sounded pretty confident saying it. You're a marketer, which I think is really cool that you self-identify. Look, I'm great at marketing. It is what it is. I don't want to be a CEO. That might pull me in the wrong direction. And yeah. like the, the position I'm in, we got 30 people and we're growing this team and everything you said are challenges that you have to handle and handle well and, and deal with people and it can get messy. Um, and I do like doing it and, I, and I'm good at it, but that comes at a cost. There's an opportunity cost because when you're dealing with those things at a high level, you're not executing on other things at a high level. You're, you're not you're an agent anymore, right? When you're a team leader, you're a CEO. You're, you're not an agent anymore. You're dealing with people. You're dealing with the organization. You're trying to build a business. Um, I don't want to build a business, right? I want to be on the outskirts of that business and use – see, if, if there's a company that has 100 employees and I can partner with that company – to help them sell their product as, as one of the marketers, then essentially those are my hundred employees, even though I don't deal with them. You know, if they give me a cut of every, every time that there's a transaction of their product, um, then, then I've essentially, you know, I don't have equity in that company, but essentially I'm making free cash flow with no expenses outside of whatever it took me to build my brand, you know, um, and so that's what's very interesting to me because as I look into the education space, I'm like, okay, I can go build an education company. I can build a course. I can do all this and that. Or I can just partner with a company that has 100 employees, that has sales, that has marketing, that has website guys, that have all the things that you need to be able to scale to eight, nine figures. Right. Right. Because um, once you scale to a certain point, your margins are so low. Right. You know, and that bit, I could go out and create a course and make a million dollars today. Easy. Um, but to scale that to 10 million, I have to hire staff. And now I'm at 30% margins um, and a lot of headaches. So, you know, I'm the kind of guy, I don't want to go build a hundred person company, but I want to take advantage of somebody else's hundred person company. Well, I can just be an affiliate if I love the product. You know, that's the way I see it. And then, okay, where's your equity? Well, like I say, I'm buying $100 million worth of real estate this year. And that's going to continue every year, right? And not only that, I have plenty of opportunities to buy in to companies I love and own equity pieces of, you know. So, trust me, I have plenty and plenty of equity that will continue to appreciate, you know, through businesses and um, real assets like real estate. It's beautiful how you tie it all together because as, as someone who doesn't want to be a CEO, well, you are the CEO of the Ricky Caruso show and like as in you controlling your own interests as you do so well and see what that doesn't mean is you can't go play with this money and do big things. So just because you don't want to build a team doesn't mean you're not going to be building a massive group of people who you're investing with and doing only the things you're great at and things you want to do, which is awesome. So I'm glad you said that because you alluded a little bit to what's next on the um, potentially the, the coaching education space. Any Anything you want to tease us with here? Because it sounds like that brain of yours is on to something with partnering with other people or, or putting out content. I'll, I'll speak on behalf of real estate agents in Maryland, at least. I want to know the Ricky Carruth personal branding playbook 
as it continues to develop. Cause I want to know what you're doing next. And guess what? In mm-hmm. this summer, you're going to be doing something cause Instagram changed something and there's a new yeah. feature and I want yeah. to know what you're doing. Uh, like as far as real estate investing goes, as far as social media goes, um, things of that nature. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm getting into those spaces, right. Into the education side of the business to, uh, to create, you know, groups, groups and situations that, um, we can all learn together on this kind of stuff, you know, and continue to keep up with the algorithms as they change new platforms, as they come along, new features as they open. Um, so that, that's, what's fun is I'm like a, I'm like a social hacker, you know, like I'm always looking for what's this little thing I can do that can really drive more organic reach, reach more people, you know, drive growth, um, the most efficient way. And it's just like, kind of like a, I'm like a grinder because like, I'm not like a, you know, a Jake Paul or, a, um, somebody else that like just goes viral and picks up millions of subscribers. I'm more of the little guy that just like churns out so much content. Like even Gary V, like he has 4 million subscribers on YouTube and he gets like, you know, 20 million, 20,000 views, uh, you know, video, something like that. That's like less than one. That's like a half a percent of, of, you know, views to subscribers. Yeah. Um, he's just like the little gerbil. He's just like the little grinder, you know, that just continues to put out stuff that most of his following is not watching. Right. But people just see him churning it out. So that's a different style than let me go viral and get a million subs in one video. You know, it's two different, two different avenues. Right. And, and I'm the grinder. I'm, I'm in the grinder path. You know, I got like 1500 videos on YouTube. I got less than a hundred thousand subs or like 90 something thousand subs. So pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, I know, I know guys with a hundred videos that have 30 million subs. Um, well, you're going to get just there. have to like look at all this stuff in relative and what's what's subjective. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it brought you tons of value. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm going to put the next video right here for you. So you don't have to go anywhere. You can just click this video to keep that Ricky train rolling. Hey, we'll see you guys on this next video. And I'll talk to you soon.